What do you think is hiding behind all the problems with modern orchids? What is the main secret cause of slow orchid growth, difficulty to bring orchids to the blooming phase, problems with those pests like scales and mealybugs? We know for a fact that this natural phenomenon, that insects identify unhealthy plants as food and bypass healthy plants. So again, the question is, are our orchids at home unhealthy? Let's take another look together at this problem. I was searching a lot and I want to share with you what I found. I was explaining in one of my previous videos why orchids are called the sloth of the plant world due to its very adaptive protective mechanisms called photosynthesis. Although there is another reason. Did you know, for example, that there are about 70 natural species of Phalaenopsis orchids in the world? But there are thousands of varieties of Phalaenopsis orchids on the world market today. And every year, approximately 300 new varieties are added to the list. All of these new varieties are a result of hybridization and gene manipulation, mainly polyploidy. Polyploidy may occur due to abnormal cell division, either during mitosis or meiosis. In addition, it can be induced in plants and cell cultures by some toxic chemicals, colchicine, which can result in a chromosome doubling, or azalin, which will also double the existing chromosome content. A variety of chromosome numbers in some Phalaenopsis cultivars have been reported, mostly to be triploids with 57 chromosomes, tetraploids with 76 chromosomes, even hexaploids with 114 chromosomes. Normal diploid number of chromosomes for Phalaenopsis orchids is 38, which is very rare among modern hybrids. Because of this disturbance during meiosis of interspecific hybrids, a number of Phalaenopsis cultivars show reduced fertility or complete sterility and can be propagated by cell tissue culture only. A lot of modern varieties of Phalaenopsis orchids even further mutants with additional chromosomes or reduced chromosomes. They're called hyperpolyploids or hypopolyploids. For example, wedding promenade Phalaenopsis orchids with 60 chromosomes is a hypertriploid cultivar. Vast majority of Phalaenopsis are true tetraploids. Some hypertetraploid cultivars include P. Sogovivian with 81 chromosomes and P. Luwian grape, which is 78 chromosomes. What does it mean for my mutant orchid to be so genetically different from the natural species? And from multiple studies conducting research about these problems with plant polyploidy, I can summarize these next facts that eventually all polyploids suffer more from recurrent deleterious mutations than diploids. This means that orchids created in the lab are being propagated by tissue culture after a few generations, we'll start to lose all the characteristics of these specific varieties. And for me, that means that it's a road without an exit or an evolutionary dead end. And that's probably the reason why there are so many varieties popping up on the market every year. Another problem is that the effects of polyploidization, cell volume generally rises with the increasing genome size. Larger cells tend to have a smaller surface area to volume ratio, a phenomenon thought to lower the growth rate of polyploid cells. Whether or not cell geometry actually affects growth rate depends on the environment. Perhaps as a consequence of a slower metabolism, polyploids tend to exhibit a slower development. And this is another secret besides chemphotosynthesis that makes our orchid mutants to be the sloth of the plant world. A surprising feature of many newly formed polyploids is that their genomes are unstable and undergo rapid repatterning, extensive genomic rearrangements, and fragment loss. Also, it was observed that polyploidy changes gene expression and may cause errors with cell segregation. You're probably going to say that polyploidy is a natural evolutionary process that can happen on its own as a result of hybridization between species or as a mutation. And yes, I agree, but in nature, the hybridization barrier plays its role by eliminating that through many mechanisms, such as infertility, low seed germination rates, inability to adapt to the environment, and so on. 
In a lab, it's different as it's forced and artificially supported. Our immune orchids were just paying for larger flowers, bigger leaves, unusual vibrant colors, unique textures with slow growth, weaknesses, inability to adapt to changing conditions, inability to resist pets and pathogens, and fast entropic processes. As a florist, I do really enjoy new colors and varieties that I can offer to my clients. But as an orchid grower, I'm always noticing more difficulties with caring for these, especially with these new varieties. It is definitely good for multi-million world orchid trades, as so many varieties can be created annually in the lab and become patented. You know that natural species cannot be patented, but genetically manipulated ones can be, and they can be controlled and sold for larger profits. It is also very good for my floral business, as many people fall in love with these adorable orchids, but my question does remain open. If this is all good for Mother Nature, 